The back of the packet is as informative as ever. Finished garment measurements, width of the lower edge. Really? I mean... Really? Hey peeps, welcome back to the sewing room. Today it is 9076 day. I think I have that number right. So I said yesterday I was going to take the pattern instructions up to my room to read through them and I totally didn't do that because I had a mammoth editing task ahead of me and that got completed but the pattern instruction reading didn't. But it's not going to take me very long to do. So as you probably know, two secs, start again. So as you probably know, back in December, the beginning of December, I had a mammoth cutting out session and one of the things that I cut out was the 9076 pattern, which is a pattern that I've been wanting to get to and banging on about for ages. And I cut it out of this really pretty, this really pretty petal viscose. Now, I got this from Dragonfly Fabrics with a voucher that Big Bird and Baby Bother gave Mum and I for Christmas. Uh, a couple of years ago now. Yeah, wow, it's 2022. So I had three meters of it and I just had enough to cut out this dress, which bodes really well because I think I'm gonna love this dress. And I actually have some really precious fabric in my stash that I only have three meters of and I think it's going to work really well for this if this comes out well. Loads of people have been making this recently. There's been lots of like Gunny Saxween or Gunny Saxmas challenges going around. And this is a very kind of 70s inspired looking dress. I believe Gunny Sax was most prolific in the 70s and then early 80s. That really fits in with my aesthetic at the moment. So I'm going to attempt to make this and I'm going to attempt to make this today and maybe possibly tomorrow as well because it is a new to me pattern. The instructions want you to do some really strange things on the inside. You have to fully line parts of it but then they don't bag the lining out and you just end up with raw edges on the inside which we all know I hate. So I'm going to be doing some twists and turns with this pattern and we'll see how it comes out. As I say, thankfully I have already cut the majority of it out. I do have to cut out the interfacing pieces but as ever, I think what I'm first going to do is sew up the skirt so that that can start dropping on the bias because I think it will because this is a very full skirt. So yeah, I need to get that sewn up first so it can drop on the bias. But there is also a like fiddly little plackety thing that goes in the front, which usually I would just continue the whole way down. But it's not buttons the whole way down. It's buttons to the waistline and then little concealed press studs underneath the waistline because it's not meant to be like a full button-up dress. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of finish I can achieve on the inside of that. Wish me luck. I think I also need to order some more bias binding because I've definitely used the last of this colour on the last project that I did. And this some supply. Oh and I need cord as well. One eighth inch cording. I think I have some of that in my stash. We are going on a cording hunt. This seems like the most likely box. Can I get it out one-handed? Not well. That's the perfect colour and actually I think width as well, but it is book binding twine and it doesn't feel very nice. And I'm a bit worried about sewing through it and having it stay secure. I think I'm going to make ruler loops. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I like to sew my skirts together first so that they can drop on the bias. I think I mentioned that. And this skirt has got a funny little placket thing at the front, which I was a little bit concerned about, but turns out I could fully French seam it, which is great. Okay, skirt is done and can be beginning to drop on the bias. Next up I need to cut out all the interfacing and there is quite a lot of pieces that need interfacing in this pattern. I've kind of gotten into the habit of not cutting out the interfacing until I come to work on the project. When I do my mass cutting out sessions I just get the fabrics done and then when I come to work on the specific individual projects I'll cut the interfacing out for that. Probably ought to maybe do the, the interfacing at the same time as the fabric sessions but it's one of my least favourite jobs so let's get it done now. As long as it gets done it's it's alright. Okay so the interfacing that I use is from Australia 
and it's from a company called Tatiana Light Fabric Store. And the very lovely Susan sent this to me as a present and I absolutely love it and it's totally, totally worth getting all the way from Australia. And I'll put all of the details in the description down below. Okay, all my pieces are interfaced and I have just spent some time making some really narrow rouleau loops. So I now have enough to do the 14 buttonholes because there's four per cuff and six down at the front. <laughs> I was doing this the other day wasn't I? I was getting, getting the numbers wrong saying one thing and then doing another with the buttonholes on the 9077. Also interfaced and sewn the bottom edge of my little, what do they call it, left front extension so that's done and I can now move on to sewing together the midriff bands and the front and shoulder, uh, the front end back yoke and pieces like that so i'm gonna get all that done i, I think I, I want to do it in a slightly different way i want to bag it out and i think it's going to be slightly difficult to do that well it's going to be quite narrow and tight to do some of those pieces well so it's going to be interesting to say the least wish me luck you end up with some very strange looking pieces once you've sewn the yoke the front the midriff and the back midriff together very odd. So the neckties on this are actually cut on the bias and I got one of my handy dandy little bias tape makers out. These things are actually brilliant. I have still kind of singed the ends of my fingers when I was using this to press the bias tape flat but better than actually properly burning all of my fingers which I would have done if I hadn't had this. Once the ties were pressed I could then sew them down and then I needed to put all the gathering stitching into the front and back bodice pieces and seam them together. You've got to love it when you win a game of bobbin roulette. Now I need to sew, wind another bobbin and I'm not sure I've got enough thread. Whoops. I appreciate that this is an incredibly busy print but I have the kind of bodice almost done. So the pattern actually wants you just to kind of leave the edges raw on the inside and we all know how I feel about that. So I've done it slightly differently because of course I have. The only thing I'm going to have to do is reinforce this corner here, snip into it so that I can fold the seam allowance back and actually tack it down but I have pinned it the whole way around and it all go it's going to need slip stitching into place. I mean technically I could stitch in the ditch but I'm going to slip stitch it into place and for the next one I might consider just fully lining the bodice because it would just be a lot easier but I'm really liking how this is turning out so far so we've got like the little modesty placket kind of bit there and then the button loops go over that meets up at a little point but again because of the busy print you can't really see any of those details but you know what it's going to be really pretty so i am going to call it a night for now because i'm hungry and it's six o'clock and i want to go and make some food and eat some food but i'm pleased that i've got like the skirt done the bodice is almost done there's a lot of hand sewing to do in that and the next thing that i need to do once the hand sewing is done is the sleeves and me being me I have again changed the sleeves as well and I'm trying to decide if I want to put on the little necktie for this I have made the little neckties I showed you earlier that I made the neckties so I have made them but I don't actually like their method of making them I think if I don't think I'm going to include these ones I think what I would do in future is actually make slightly fatter rouleau loops than I made earlier and use those rather than these because these just feel a little bit chunky but they were because of the way that I'd cut them the pattern piece they weren't quite big enough for me to sew wrong side uh, right sides together and turn through it would have been really fiddly to do that so I did it the way that they suggested but I'm not loving it so I think I'm not going to use these I've got my collar sewn together but it needs trimming and turning and pressing I need to try this on because I am winging it I'm doing the thing that I always tell mum not to do I am just going in there I mean technically this is wearable muslin fodder because I can get more of this fabric I can buy more of this if uh, this goes horribly horribly wrong but I don't think it's going to and I've made enough vogue patterns now that I know that you know, the tweaks that I need to make to the bodices to get them to look good on me. Having said all that, this might look awful, so fingers crossed I'm not completely talking out of my backside, but we shall find out. But yes, food for now. So I'm going to see you tomorrow for day two of making my gunny sacks. 
inspired dress of dreams. Good morning peeps, day two of the 9076 project. I've been thinking about it overnight and the next one I am definitely just going to fully line the bodice because it's an extra three pieces of thing to cut out so yeah. But for this one I think I am going to hand stitch it down just so that I can say that I've pretty much you know done it as the pattern suggests. Yeah, so what I need to do today is actually unpin these parts here. So this is the center front and it goes at a corner here. So what I need to do is unpin this and then I need to reinforce this corner so I can clip into the corner so I can turn the seam allowance under neatly because at the moment it's kind of puckering in that area because it, it wants, it, there's, there's not enough edge for it to turn the way it needs to. I think what I'm actually going to do is hand stitch down the yoke and the waistline because those are separate pieces. That way, once they're done, it won't be kind of flapping all over the place because the minute I take that out, the, the, the inner waistband is flapping all over the place. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I also need to take out all the gathering stitches that I put in because as you know, if you follow any of my tutorials, I like to put my gathering stitches either side of my stitching line and that leaves me with some visible gathering stitches, which you really can't see on this fabric because this fabric is the busiest thing ever. It's kind of, it's not too bad in real life, but on camera it's making my eyes hurt. So I need to get some hand stitching done, then get some, yeah, hand stitching, reinforce the corner, clip into it, press more hand stitching fun times. Anyway, I'll stop waffling at you and get on with some hand sewing. I have a bodice, I have a skirt, now it's time to work on some sleeves. One eternity later. So I have my sleeves on, my collar on. I'm kind of glad I left off the little ties because I think they would have just been a bit too bulky. But let me tip you down so that I can show you what it's looking like. So I think it's, it's going to be quite snug but I do think it's going to fit quite nicely. I'm liking it so far though. I think it's going to be a really, really pretty dress. So I need to get it attached to, talk to you, need to get it attached to the skirt. So that is what I'm going to do next. A few inches later. It's thin, well, it's nearly finished. I still have to hem it. So you're not going to see a full reveal until I have leveled the hem and actually put a hem into it. And I think I'm going to do a turned and turn again hem because I don't have the right color bias binding for it. Although this fabric does have these little mustard spots in it, which I'm not sure if they're coming up or not. So I could use my mustard colored bias binding for the hem, that could look cute. I need to let this skirt drop for a couple of days, but with the magic of editing, I'll be able to show you what it looks like. So let's go. Just kidding, I've got to level the hem. You don't think I'd leave you out of the hem leveling fun now, do you? I shall be using my pinchy pinchy device. I use my pinchy pinchy device and I do have a video of all the different techniques for hem leveling. And this is my by far my favorite. So there wasn't that much that dropped on the bias, which was great. So I chopped that off and then I ran a line of stitching around the bottom hem at a quarter of an inch. I've then used that as a pressing guide to press it up once. And then once that's done, press it up again so that all the raw edges are enclosed. And then I top stitched it down using my edge stitch foot, which is why all of the dress is underneath the arm of the sewing machine rather than the other way around. Now we can do the reveal. Wrap up time. So, I like this dress. It is very 70s. I really like the top of this dress. The skirt and the way that the skirt goes on is a little bit odd. The, the back of the skirt is completely, there's no gathering at the waist and the front of the skirt has gathering at the waist. And I would have thought it would have gathering the whole way around given the blues on effect at the front and the back. So I find that a little bit odd. The front placket as well on the skirt so that you can get it on and off is just, bizarre to me so what I'm going to do when I make this again because I am going to make this again because you guys have been asking for a sew along for this dress for quite a while now I bought this pattern in 2017 by the way I'm actually going to put a side zipper in and completely el eliminate the kind of front opening weirdness that's going on because I just think it's going to be 
easier to make and give a, a nicer finish as well at the waistline. This fabric is very very busy and is hiding a multitude of sins down there so I think I get away with it but um, in a different fabric which I will show you what I'm going to use for the next one I don't think I'd get away with it quite so much so I th yeah like I said I'm going to put a side zip in and we all know how much I hate side zips. I also need to take a inch and a half out of the length of the cuff which is totally doable because the bottom of the sleeve is gathered into the cuff. To get it to fit me like this I need to take an inch and a half out so I'm going to do that I am also going to add an probably half an inch of length to the sleeve. The sleeves look really nice on this dress but they are just a little bit too short. When I start doing stuff they ride up my arms and I end up with the the I just I just want a little bit more length in the sleeves and I didn't add any so that's you know it was an experiment I held it up against from my shoulder to my wrist and thought well there's gonna be a cuff on there it'll be pretty good I'm gonna add half an inch of length to that I did add a full inch of length to the bodice and I'm really glad that I did because it's all sitting where it needs to now when I did that I added in another button and I don't think I need this button here and I also lengthened the little placket underneath and I am going to just adjust the length of that so that the top button because the top button kind of comes above the little modesty placket and the pl but if without it then the modesty placket would be too long so I'm going to adjust the length of that. Yeah overall I'm, I'm really really happy with this dress I'm really glad that I tried it. I do think the construction method that they ask you to do is a little bit lazy because you can totally cleanly finish the inside of this without fully lining it by slip stitching down all of the seam allowance on these yoke pieces. You guys have been asking to see the insides of my clothes because I talk about making an effort to make them pretty. So this is the French seam of the front placket for the skirt which I'm going to eliminate for the sew along. It's a clever method of getting in and out of a dress that you only want buttons down to the sort of waistline. And, and I was able to French seam this right angle, but I just don't like the actual finish on the dress. I also used some, actually this isn't bias binding, but I just bound the edge of the lower half of the waistband because they, I wasn't able to tuck it inside of the lining of the midriff panels. So I had to finish this edge off as well. This has been slip stitched, this has been slip stitched, slip stitched up here. And over here, the sleeves have been French seamed in. The neckband has been slip stitched into place. I appreciate this is a really busy fabric and you probably can't really see all the details, but there is a lot of handwork in this dress. What I'm gonna do, as I mentioned, is next time I'm just going to fully line it because they would have you just leave these edges raw. So I press them under and slip stitch them into place. And I think that's much nicer than leaving them raw but I, next time I'm just going to fully line it because you can and it will just be a lot easier and a lot less hand stitching. Little modesty placket there and then the rouleau loops for the buttons so yeah all in all I'm very happy with this dress just I'm going to completely change the construction method of it for the next one. What I will do next time is actually fully line the bodice. Uh, slip stitching this all down was fine. It's just a really lengthy process. This dress took way longer to make than it probably should have. Also getting the collar in and looking neat. That was another thing that was needed to be slip stitched. And if I fully line this, I'm going to do the collar very, very differently. In fact, I could have done the collar the way that I want to do it for the other method on this one because there is a full lining in this in this upper sort of like shoulder piece here but yeah I think there's there's some stuff that I want to change but I love it the silhouette enough that I'm definitely going to change those things and you guys have been asking for a sew along for this pattern as I've mentioned and I'm going to use my super precious fruity fabric I'm actually going to have to steal steal back not just steal but steal back some fabric from mum's stash because the other thing that I think is that the yokes details on this get very lost I mean obviously this is a very busy busy print but I really want to highlight these yoke pieces so what I'm going to do with this fabric is I'm going to make either piping or flat piping from a viscose that's this kind of color and I'm going to highlight the edge of the yoke pieces to to really bring out the fact that there is like all this detail work going on in this dress because as I say at the moment it's uh it's really not very noticeable but yeah 
I think it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. It definitely fits in with my 70s pirate theme. Big sleeves, the sleeves could be bigger, but they are sort of fairly big sleeves. I will make more, definitely make more. This dress, I also got it out of three meters of fabric and it has a fairly full skirt on it, which is something that I love. Very, very happy, very, very happy indeed. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you are going to take part in the sew along if you will be making one of these also what do you think of this new video format i have really enjoyed filming the process of making this dress i'm going to see if i enjoy editing it just as much but uh, you'll have to let me know in the comments down below what you think so i hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't please subscribe and i'll see you again very soon bye